We're now just a few days away from falling back for daylight saving time, and that means we'll be getting an extra hour of sleep on Sunday morning. That's if you don't have young kids, because <laughs> that doesn't just, count. <laughs> doesn't count for most of us. It can be really tough on us, especially our kids. Joining us to talk about this is Dr. Jeff Potoff, UW Health's Chief Quality Officer. Doctor, if we survive the snowy Halloween, lucky us, we get to really mess with our system with it getting dark even earlier here, and this can really affect us. You know, it can. It seems like such a simple thing. Uh, but, you know, for all of us uh, that get up Sunday uh, or go to work on Monday and feel a little bit sluggish, uh, there is some science behind that. Uh, daylight savings can mess up a lot of our systems. Uh, for folks that have a rare disorder called cluster headaches, uh, that change uh, in that circadian rhythm can sometimes set off days of headaches. People with migraines, likewise, uh, more likely to have those migraines. We know that it increases, uh, you know, depressive mood. There's more motor vehicle accidents. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with our circadian rhythm, which is pretty much dictated by the amount of light that we're seeing each day. Uh, and this fall forward and spring back uh, messes with that to a pretty significant degree. I think it's fascinating. What is the circadian rhythm that we all technically should yeah, have? Yeah, yeah, that circadian rhythm is, is basically a process in our brains, chemically mediated, uh, but based on the amount of daylight that we see, it helps us know when we should go to bed and when we should be awake. Uh, and a lot of things follow that as far as our mood, appetite, and things like that. And you wouldn't think an hour could cause that much trouble, but it can. Uh, certainly folks who get jet lag, that's another uh, you know, circadian rhythm issue, sometimes more significant because it's you know six hours difference. Uh, you really feel it. It's really hard to adjust to that. I know some people, they just travel to like Indiana and switch time zones and it can really mess with you, but it's the same concept. It's just your body knows when something's a little off, right? Absolutely, yep. And what should we be doing to kind of lessen the blow, if, especially if we are affected by changing time zones or obviously here daylight saving? Yeah, I think certainly in the fall, it's a little bit less impactful because we gain that hour of sleep. Uh, so that can be a little bit better, uh, but you may still find yourself needing to take it easy, get some more sleep in the spring is where you have to be extra careful and make sure that we're not cutting ourselves short an hour of sleep multiple nights in a row as we get used to it. Otherwise, we start to feel those effects a little bit more. Yeah, although sometimes easier said than done. All right, let's talk about a very spooky headline. Your eye drops could make you blind. What's going on? The FDA's got a new warning out. Yeah, I mean, this sounds perfect for Halloween, but uh, this is probably one of the more expansive warnings the FDA has put out, uh, and it's uh, it's not a trick, it's real life. So uh, there are eye drops that are out there that may have not been made in a sterile fashion. They have bacteria in them, and they could lead ultimately to blindness. Now, there's no reported cases of that. The thing that's different about this warning versus other ones is these eye drops are sold in a lot of really common places, CVS, Rite Aid, Walmart. Uh, you know, manufacturers, these uh, businesses are pulling them off the shelf. Uh, the list is long, about 26 different eye drops. Uh, certainly go to the FDA website, check out any eye drops that you recently bought or are planning on buying. Make sure they're not on that list. Uh, throw those away. And the real concern here, there, there could be bacteria that drugs really cannot treat, right? Right, so the bacteria that's in there uh, can be pretty tricky to treat with antibiotics. It's resistant to a lot of antibiotics, so that raises increased concern as if you do get this infection, it makes it a little bit more difficult for doctors to treat it. That is spooky. We will not talk about the health of candy. I refuse to talk about that on our Halloween, and I hope you have fun trick-or-treating. I know you're going out um, dressed maybe as a mummy with a bunch of scarves around your head now with the temperature. <laughs> so appreciate your time. Thanks, Doc. Have a good night, guys.